things that I think we and, and um, other media need to start doing is preparing um, the American people that um, there's nothing illegitimate about this election taking additional days or even weeks um, to make sure that all the votes are counted. In fact, that might be important to make sure that this is a legitimate um, and fair election. The reason we talk about a red mirage is, in fact, because we believe that on election night, we are going to see Donald Trump in a stronger position than the reality actually is. We are sounding an alarm and saying that this is a very real possibility, that the data is going to show on election night an incredible victory for Donald Trump. You know, Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances because I think this is going to drag out and eventually I do believe he will win if we don't give an inch and if we are as focused and relentless as the other side is. You have a result on election night where it appears that Donald Trump has won, but a result after ballots are counted that show that Joe Biden has actually won. That's right. We essentially built a simulator where it's a sequence of sliders and you just pull those sliders to start seeing what the scenarios will show you. What's it gonna look like on election night? What's it gonna look like the day after, and the day after that, and the day after that? So if one of the um, candidates in, in any of the races claims victory before there's um, a consensus result, then we're going to add some informational context to that post directly saying that, um, that there, there's no consensus result yet. We see in the data that twice as many voters intend to cast a ballot by mail than have ever before. They are disproportionately Joe Biden's supporters. We might have the results saying something on the evening of November 3rd that it will not say the evening of November 10th. My advice to Joe Biden, and I've told the campaign this, obviously, is do not concede under any circumstances because I believe the other side is going to cheat and and sneak and try he to says do everything if he they loses, he's not gonna pull, he's not gonna leave if he if he loses the fact is whether he knows it yet or not he will be leaving uh, just because he might not want to move out of the White House doesn't mean we won't have an inauguration ceremony to inaugurate a duly elected president of the United States. But there is a process. It has nothing to do with that the certain occupant of the White House doesn't feel like moving and has to be fumigated out of there because the presidency is the presidency. It's not geography or location. This president is going to try to steal this election. This is a guy who said that all mail-in ballots are fraudulent. Have you ever considered what would happen if the election result came out as you being the winner and Trump refused to leave? Yes, I have. And I was so damn proud. Here you have four chiefs of staff coming out and ripping the skin off of Trump. And you have so many rank-and-file military personnel saying, whoa, we're not a military state. This is not who we are. I promise you, I'm absolutely convinced they will escort him from the White House in a, in a, with great dispatch. It has been suggested that this is a trial run for the president of the United States, who may be organizing uh, to not accept uh, what happens when we have the election. If he's not elected, is he going to pull out? His military, is he going to engage us? He is already alluded to there may be a civil war if he's not reelected. This is dangerous. We are trying to find out more about it. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution uh, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's really actually shameful. Enemies of the state. Without exaggeration, President Trump's counterintelligence vulnerabilities are exponentially greater than any president in modern history. So do you think the president is a national security threat? I do. This administration, this president has demonstrated that they have a capacity to go lower than we can even possibly imagine. So, yeah, I think we have to be um, concerned about that. His attempt to um, talk about mail-in voting and all the fraud that is um, associated with it is factually incorrect. He's just trying to set up a, a, a situation where he has the ability to delegitimize a vote that he might lose. If he loses, and I expect that he will, uh, then we have to be prepared for what he is going to do in the immediate aftermath of such a loss and what he'll do for the time period between uh, the election and the inauguration of the next president. Uh, we have to be prepared for things that this nation has never faced um, before.
I think that this is important because there is, unfortunately, I, I think, a heightened risk of um, of civil unrest in, in the period, you know, between uh, between voting and and a result being called or, or, or after that. And I, I just think that we need to be doing everything that we can to uh, reduce the chances of violence or civil unrest in the in the wake of this election. If you think things cannot possibly get worse, trust me, they can and they will if we don't make a change in this election. And if we don't meet this moment, we will continue to have um, these persistent injustices in our communities, and we will continue to have um, unrest in our streets because there's been unrest in people's lives. Today we are lifting up these stories in the hopes that you will see the light. And if you don't, we will bring the fire. Thank you. This is a movement, I'm telling you. They're not going to stop. And, and everyone beware, because they're not going to stop. It is going to, they're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not. And we should not. And yeah, I am a radical. <laughs> I do <laughs> yeah. believe that we need to get radical about what we are doing and right. take it seriously. I'm looking to the public. You know, this is as much about public outcry and organizing and mobilizing and applying pressure so that this GOP-led Senate and that these governors that continue to carry water for this administration, putting the American people in, in harm's way, um, turning a deaf ear to the needs of our families and our communities, hold them accountable. Well, make the phone call, send the email, show up.